classic cars, good drinks, beautiful buildings, markets and souvenirs, culture, art and history, Havana has it all. Hello everybody and welcome to my YouTube channel Maria's Travel Tips. In this video I'll show you 16 attractions that I really recommend that you see in Havana. For example where you can see this really good view over the capital, where you can go to a very cheap concert, why you should really go on the free walking tour, and I'll show you some beautiful areas and art and a really good restaurant where Barack Obama also ate when he visited Cuba. Let's begin. Attraction number one, go on a classic car tour. One of the best things I did in Havana was seeing the capital from a classic car because the ride takes around one hour and you'll see a lot of Havana from the most famous places to the more local areas. The driver also tells you a lot on the way about the buildings and the culture, so it's a really great tour where you learn a lot. The tour also stops at the famous plaza, Plaza de la Revolution, which is quite far away from the city center and where the José Martí Memorial Building is. You can by the way get up in the building and see the amazing view, but then you have to return to the plaza because you'll only be at the plaza for around 10 minutes with the classic car tour. The tour continues to a park, the Malecon and so much more. To go on a classic car tour you just go up to the driver and ask for the price. A lot of the Cuban drivers will start with a high price like 50 cook for one hour, but you can bargain it down. We were two people and we got one hour for 30 cook. Attraction number two. See the capital from the inside. This majestic construction was built in 1926 and for only 10 cook that's around $10 you get to see it all on a tour guide for 45 minutes. Here the guide will tell you in English about the building and some anecdotes. For example more than 8,000 people work on building the parliament and there has been used more than 85 different kinds of marble. You can purchase the tickets outside to the left of the stairs but there's only a limited number every day, so don't wait. Attraction number three is one of my favorite memories from Havana. The nightclub Cuban Art Factory, also called FAC, or Fabrica Arte Cubano. I have been there twice and I absolutely just love the place. The building was once an old oil mile, but today it's a cool place and a mix between a nightclub, gallery and performance center that promotes local Cuban artists, writers, photographers and filmmakers. No matter if you're into live music, DJs or just want to relax with a good drink, FAC has it all. It is so big and there's so much to see that you cannot see it all in one night. FAC opens from Tuesday to Sunday at 8 p.m. and even though the building has so many floors, rooms, scenes, it is often packed by 11. So I recommend to be there before 9, especially if you want to go around and see the different kinds of art without too many people around you. However, FAC is closed due to maintenance every September, January and May. I'll put a link below so you can see their official website. Attraction number 4 See the Almacenes San Jose market. The Cubans are famous for the cigars, but in my opinion, they should be just as famous for their art and painting skills. At the Almacenes San Jose Artisan Market, there are so many beautiful paintings. But the market also have a lot of other things to offer, like clothes, woodcraft, bags, and a lot of other souvenirs. There is also an Atexa office in the building, so you can buy a Wi-Fi card there as well. Attraction number 5. See Fustalandia. This area has a lot of different mosaic art on the walls, benches, houses and art sculptures. You should be there before 4 o'clock in the afternoon, because there is an area with many sculptures and it closes at 4 o'clock. Fostalandia is a little far away from the city center, but we paid 10 cook to get out there with a taxi. Otherwise, you can take the bus to go there because that would be a lot cheaper. It will be easy to get off at the right bus stop because the bus stop is made with a lot of mosaic. Attraction number 6. Go on the free walking tour. Every day there's a free walking tour and I have only really good things to say about this tour. 
because the guide will take you to places that you would never find yourself and on the way the guide will tell you a lot about the Cuban life and history. There are two kinds of tours, an old Havana and a central Havana tour. And you can choose between going on the tour with a Spanish or English speaking guide. The meeting point is Plaza de Handel, which is close to the museum, Museum de la Revolución, which is also a place you should consider going to. I took the old Havana tour and it took 3 hours, and at first I thought it would be a very long tour, but I was so wrong. It was never boring, and on the tour we saw different places, heard about the school system, the daily life in Cuba, and saw so many interesting places. I really really think this is something you should do. And at the end of the tour you can tip the guide whatever you want. So on this tour I tried to show you not only the classic and touristic Havana's places, but also the less popular parts of the city where you can see and feel the real Cuban lifestyle. It's gonna be one of the greatest options that you have here in Havana. So every day we are giving two tours, 9.30 in the morning and 4 p.m. in the afternoon, okay? No doubts that it's gonna be a great, it's one of the greatest options here in Havana. So so come to Havana and welcome to Cuba. Attraction number 7. See the sunset at the Malecon. The Malecon is a roadway and seawall which stretches 8 kilometers around the coast in Havana. I enjoyed walking there in the daytime, but the best is without question being at the Malecon during sunset. Not only can you be lucky to see a beautiful sunset, but being on the Malecon in the evening is also a good way to see some of the local culture. Because a lot of men go fishing in the evening and you might be sitting and enjoying the view and at the same time be a part of a fishing adventure. Along the Malecon there are also some places to buy cheap meals. And it's a really good place to just go and chill in the evening, like a lot of Cubans do as well. Attraction number 8. See the Grand Teatro de la Habana. Only a few hundred meters from the capital is the Grand Teatro de la Habana. The theater has been home to the Cuban National Ballet and to the International Ballet Festival. Its facilities include a theater, a concert hall, conference rooms, as well as an art gallery, several rehearsal halls for dancing companies and so much more. And for only $5 you can get a tour. The building is just as detailed and beautiful on the inside as on the outside. The guided tour took around 20 minutes. Attraction number 9. See the amazing artwork in Havana. The capital is filled with beautiful street painting like this incredible monkey. But you can find street paintings many places in the old town. These paintings here are from the street Jesu Maria, which is close to the Almacenes San Jose market. Attraction number 10. If you know the famous writer Ernest Hemingway, you can visit his home in Cuba or some of his favorite places where he got a drink. La Bodeguita del Medio is known for having the best mojitos according to the famous writer. Ernest Hemingway also liked to drink daiquiris and El Floridita was his famous place to get one. There's even a statue of him in the bar. The daiquiri costs $6 and the place has a really nice atmosphere and sometimes live music. Attraction number 11. Go to a free street party. If you happen to be in Havana on a Sunday, there is two things I'll recommend you to do that is not far from each other. First, get lunch at Chaplin's, which is a local restaurant that has a really good rating on the app MapsMe. I got a plate with chicken, rice, a huge lemonade and a bottle of water to less than $4. In walking distance, you should afterwards go to the street Callejón de Hamel, which is a little narrow street with live music every Sunday. The Cubans come here to relax and have a really good time. It is free to go there and you can drink some beer and just enjoy the Cuban vibes, so I really liked it. Once again, I will recommend that you use an offline map app to get there, for example MapsMe. Attraction number 12, go to a concert. Another place where you truly get to meet the local culture is at the Pabellon. 
This place has different music scenes, a market, many good food booths and art and you'll only pay $2 in entry to be a part of all of it. It was a coupon that gave me the tip to go there and I was really glad because there's not a lot of tourists who know about this place. So you really get to be a part of the local coupon culture with a lot of great music. <laughs> Attraction number 13. Visit the famous shopping street Obispo. It is quite different from other famous shopping streets in the world because there's only local stores. Because of their history there are no famous brands so instead you'll find local art shops and bars and some shops with Cuban clothes. There's also a little market where you can buy all kinds of souvenirs and new accessories. And then there's also an Texas on the street in case you need to buy a Wi-Fi card. Attraction number 14. Try a salsa class. You can try salsa many places in Cuba so you don't necessarily have to do it in Havana, but I'm just mentioning it here because it should without question be on your to-do list. Attraction number 15. See the different plazas in Havana. There are different plazas in the old town. This one is Plaza de la Catedral, but I will encourage you to see all of them. I'll put a list on the different plazas below the video. Attraction number 16 is about food, and the really good restaurants you should definitely eat at, and the local peso food. The restaurant Doña Eudimira Palada is famous and have won many prizes for its food, and it has really high ratings online as well. If you want to go there for dinner or lunch, you need to book a table in advance to make sure to get a table. I hadn't and I was just lucky to get a table because I came around 2 p.m. and it was still quite full inside but I could get a table outside. The food was really good and a little bonus is that there's a free gallery next to the restaurant. Another really good place to eat is Paladar San Cristobal. I think the food was so yummy there, but if you don't believe me, ask Michelle or Barack Obama who dined there during their stay in Cuba. The restaurant also has a really nice atmosphere and a lot of history on the walls. Remember that the restaurant is closed on Mondays. I will also encourage you to try the really cheap peso food, which means that you will normally pay with the other currency, Moneda Nacional. There are two currencies in Cuba and if you don't know about them, you can watch my other video before going to Cuba where I tell you about the two currencies and more important, how you can see the difference. But anyway, if you don't have Moneda Nacional, I usually just paid with Cook and that was fine. Peso food is really cheap and you can for example buy this burger or this pizza for just $1. But you can also buy other peso things like coffee or even beer. The peso ice cream is also delicious. No matter what flavor I got, it was just so good. And you'll only pay 50 cents for an ice cream. Around the city, there's also a lot of small markets where you can buy really good fruit. For example, the mango that will cost you less than 50 cents and it is so tasty. My last food tip here comes with a great view over Havana, but you don't have to eat there. During my time in Havana, I also wanted to eat at the famous restaurant La Garita. However, it was fully booked, but the restaurant also has a bar on the roof where you can eat. So I will definitely encourage you to go to this bar where you get really good food, have a really good view and you don't need to have a reservation. I hope you liked this video and will give it a thumbs up. Feel also free to subscribe or comment below if you have any questions and I'll get back to you. If you want to know more about places you could go to in Cuba, you can watch my other video about Vinales, San Fuegos and Trinidad. I have also made videos about what you should know before going to Cuba, what to pack and how to travel in this amazing country. I wish you a very nice day. Bye.